Hello guys, my name is Jesse Naidu and I'll be talking to you today about IoT for home automation. So before we discuss home automation, I would first like to discuss what IoT is. So as all of you know, IoT stands for the Internet of Things. It refers to the collective network of connected devices and the technology that facilitates the communication between these devices and the cloud. The devices that I'm referring to can be ranged from home appliances to physical devices such as vehicles and things like that. All these devices that's connected in your network is uniquely identified and that is why that enables them to share data between them. So now that we defined what IoT is, we can now define home automation. So this is the process of connecting a range of IoT devices to a network so that they can automate your home. It's a type of technology that allows you to execute and create functions, automatic functions for your devices. These functions can be in the forms of schedules, rules, or scenarios. For example, you can have, uh, for example, of a of an schedule, you can enable your lights to switch on at a certain time when it gets dark. For rules, you can make your IoT device respond to different actions. And for scenarios, you can uh, turn on a light when you enter a room. So those are just basic examples of how uh, you can enable home automation. So home automation using IoT. Now, most IoT devices connect to the internet. This allows it to communicate with other IoT devices and with communicates with the cloud. The purpose of an IoT device is so that it can be remotely controlled. This can be done through your phone or your or a laptop or anything like that. Uh, most IoT devices are smart TV, smart bulbs, smart locks that can be controlled. Now, there are four components of an IoT automated house. And uh, so we're just going to go through these components one by one. So the first component is a IoT device. This can be a sensor or actuator software. Uh, yeah, so a sensor can be cameras, motion detectors, and light sensors. Uh, actuators can be switches, locks, or any, any device that does a physical action. The second component is gateway software. This is, is what is used to connect your device to your home's local network. This can be done through your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet. Your gateway can do basic functions, for example, onboard new devices, or they can do more powerful things like use AI to interpret certain actions so that they can perform certain actions uh, on that data. The third component is a smartphone. So you can install any app on your laptop or your phone. So the purpose of the smartphone is to control, remotely control all the items in your house or your IoT devices. The fourth and probably the most important is cloud software. So the cloud software completes the end-to-end -end solution of your home automation. You can configure AWS or Azure or Google's cloud software to connect to your smart home and it will allow it to manage control and monitor all your I IoT devices for you. To elaborate more on the cloud software part, AWS has a bunch of IoT products that they offer. For example, they have IoT Core, which allows you to connect your IoT devices to the AWS cloud, but unfortunately this does not provision any uh, or manage any service for you. There is AWS IoT events, this enables you to detect, respond, uh, to, to detect and respond to events based on sensors uh, when they interpret data. You also have AWS IoT Device Defender, which basically just provides extra security for all your IoT devices. So there's a slight problem with the home automation industry, and that the problem is that when you buy an IT, IoT device, it is limited to the ecosystem that it can run on. For example, if you have Alexa running in your home, you will only be able to buy IoT devices that can interact with Alexa. Now, there is a solution for this. This solution is called Matter. Now, Matter is a freely available connectivity standard for smart homes and IoT devices. In simple terms, Matter enables different devices and different ecosystems, for example, Alexa, Apple Siri or Google Assistant, it allows them to play nicely with each other. 
So instead of devices being controlled by different services, depending on the brand you buy, it can now be controlled locally, depending on the ecosystem you want to run it on. So whatever ecosystem you pick, uh, Alexa, for example, you can run any device if it's matter compatible. Device manufacturers need to follow a matter standard. So you can, you just, when you buy an IT, IoT device, you just have to look for the matter symbol for that specific device. So matter is a fairly new technology. It's not been around since 2020, and it still has a lot of improvements to go to. But for earlier versions of matter, you could not use all devices. Only certain devices could be used. For example, light bulbs and switches can actually be added to your ecosystem. With the newer versions of matter, you can add a range of new devices, such as electric vehicle chargers, uh, microwave ovens, normal ovens, stuff like that. So home automation is a growing industry. It is relatively new. The current market value is at $72 billion uh, currently, but by 2032, it's predicted to get to around $200 billion. And yes, uh, that is me. Thank you very much.